guys, it's Sarah with Grassroots Evolution Tarot, and I'm here to bring you a message from Spirit just to see what messages we get. We're strongly guided to come in today. For all my subscribers, I love, love, love you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here. You guys mean the world to me. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. If you feel like it resonates, um, please hit subscribe. Join the journey with me. I'd love to have you along the ride. I apologize for the lighting, um, but... <laughs> this is kind of the best I have right now, okay? I have the lighting on on the camera, and we'll see what comes up. I have three decks. I brought the Angelarium again with the Work Your Light Oracle, and also I have the Native American Tarot here. And I, I just love this because of the warrior at the back, the warrior of vessels, the warrior of hearts. Um, this would be the Knight of Hearts, but I love that this is the warrior. And this warrior sits in this quiet contemplation. And there is, a, what I heard is, an importance and like a peaceful, um, they say peaceful protest, pe peaceful kind of confrontation. So, <clears throat> for some of you, what I heard is some of us like we avoid conflict at all freaking, all possible, right? So I'm going to take a moment just to call in spirit. I'm going to ask Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron, my team of light, any of my spirit guides or your spirit guides that would be here for the highest good of the entire collective. I ask them to join us to guide, guard, bless, and protect myself, this reading, and any of you who would ask for it, as well as to use me as the clearest channel possible, delivering messages that are for the most far-reaching, but for the highest good of all of us. Interesting. So this isn't even a tarot card, but I've even never met... <laughs> So I'm going to read it to you, though, because it says, Sia Medicine Song. Very, very <laughs> interesting. I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to tell you what it says, okay? Grant our children life and happiness. Send forth the good south winds. Send forth your breath over the waters, that our world may be beautiful and our people may thrive. <clears throat> Far off over there, Sun Father awakens and climbs up his ladder, leaving his resting place. May all complete life's long road, may all grow old. May our little ones know the sweet smell of the sacred breath of life. May our children have maids that they can complete their journey. Sit down, remain here, we give our best, our thoughts. We inhale the sweet smell of the sacred breath, breath through our prayer plumes. Interesting. <clears throat> hearing about the prayer plumes and the importance of engaging in active prayer and uh, prayer does not have to be in a religious sense right it doesn't have to be um a formal thing but your 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 heart's conversation with the divine or the spirit creator god source universe your connection to that i feel like this is the importance um there's something i there's something here I'm hearing, you know, my grandma, I'm hearing my grandma's words and her and I used to have a lot of kind of theological discussions because for a long time, some of uh, my family, like my, I'll give you a little backstory, but I have um, an uncle. I had an uncle. He's passed away now, but my great uncle was a Pentecostal minister and I seen a way of church and then my grandmother, you know, definitely very, very strong faith and in her values and how she moved in her world but we were having a discussion about like churchianity and christianity and the difference and i think that you know they're they're giving me this active prayer in having experienced uh two very different ways of i'll say worship because there is what there's okay i'm just gonna tell you what i'm hearing because it's coming out talking about like those of us especially like if you are Christian right they're saying there's those of us that can go to church and then there's those of you that practice your faith not going to church does not make you not Christian this is what they're saying to me okay that's just basically it so <clears throat> I think though they're saying there is a real importance on in terms of our active prayers which is again our conversations with the divine and opening up and they're saying if there is something 
that you're going through that's hard, they're like, hand it to spirit. Give it to spirit. Give it to source. Give it to God. These are our prayers. These are those open, honest communications and conversations. So the, I'm gonna I'm being guided to share more. I'm gonna pull one of these cards, but in terms of my Uncle David's church, he 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 could move his crowd, right? His his my uncle as a minister, as a pastor, he could he could get that congregation up and moving and singing and you know praise Jesus hallelujah arms moving that the songs the music the vibration was up and I remember you know as a kid I also tried like my family never really like my my immediate family they weren't churchgoers so I went with certain cousins over the years and like there'd be times where I'd go be feeling like um I I I felt drawn to it so I'm just I don't for some of you, you may be encountering this it may be what's gonna come up in this reading and it could have been this is why it's come out of here is that in terms of this what what I learned even especially from again not being devout in that the faith just going to the experiences are you know They're reminding me something here, okay? It's just, um, okay, that's what it is. It's, it's ways of prayer, ways of worship, because one is so dry, and you're sitting in your seat, and, um, you get up, and you sing your hymns, and you sit back down, and another one is, yeah, you're down, and you're sitting up, and you got your hymns going, but they're popping, and they're rocking, and they're, you're moving, and, there is, um, I, I heard elated, okay, an elated sense, and I think that there is real purpose and for, for that kind of spiritual community, like, you can go to spiritual churches, you know, there is a real purpose for going and being in, I'll say mass, or in, in those moments, but there's also real spiritual purpose in being able to take a walk in the woods or be out in nature. So I'm hearing the song, it's a country song about nature is my church. But for some of you, and again, they're bringing this churchianity, Christianity up. They're like the same thing can be said in like spirituality. There are those of within any communities who may feel a certain ritual is the way to go this is the only or box it and then there's going to be the other open spirits that it's just they're practicing how they're practicing and they're doing their goodwill within the world but it's not something that needs to have a label or be placed in a box so to speak okay i hope that resonated um but i'm going to move forward here just saying again, though, that being aware of your words, being aware of your intentions, and being aware of how you own, are, they said, treat your own self and your own body, because these are prayers that we're putting out in the world. But this is, it's the same they said, it's the same with spells. Our words are spells, our thoughts, our intentions, that kind of energy that we're putting out into the world. When we are asking, they're like, if you're asking God or the divine for assistance, and they're like, here, sitting down in your journey. They're like, check your motives. Because again, like, so they're giving me an example of someone super angry, you know, praying to God that somebody else will have a downfall. Whereas, I would say that if we're upset and angry with someone, we wish them love and light and the hurt and trauma within them to be transmuted right to help them heal and I mean there is I heard there's importance and protection spells this has been coming up a lot lately the importance of protection because um, I heard the words the Jezebel spirit so there's the crumbling this could be within a relationship a friendship a mask 
upscale, but there are going to be those spirits that are going to try and keep you heard from your faith, okay? It's getting pretty specific, um, but it's the truth. So there, I'm going to give you examples, and here's what I'm trembling for. You may have people around you who um, may tell you that your beliefs are bullshit. Okay, this is just... Um, who may belittle your belief systems, who may belittle your, again, your faith. And th this speaks of a real, I heard, insecurity in them. Um, a real... We're also going on about like the God blocks and the trauma that gives us those blocks to feel like our world is so doomed that no spirit, no, that universe, like there can't, um, or they wouldn't want to see it. Um, it's not coming out the way I want this to come out. Strange. <laughs> So the crumbling, what are you clinging to? If we look at this wall that has now been crumbled open and this energy sent down from the heavens. Ah, oh, how I heard that was like when Bumblebee and Transformer, the first Transformers um, movie, when he is explaining to Sam Witwicky how, how he came down. He was like, sent down from the heavens. Right? And it's like, that's what I heard. Like, this, <laughs> this energy was, like, sent down from the heavens. This power. And they're like, destruction may be happening around you, but it's going to open up to some brighter doors. They're also showing me, well, I'm seeing, like, the land before time. Um, but it's not the land before time. I'm thinking of one of the ice ages where they open up and they find, you know, the, the valley. Uh, it's probably the valley as well for land before time. And I'm thinking of Kong versus Godzilla versus Kong, um, where they go down into the water type stuff and they come out into this whole other plane of existence. They're saying, like, let the things that are falling away for you fall away right now. Also, that this is a time of radical honesty. You see what messages we have from the Angelarium. It says it's the Oracle of the Fallen. I think these are absolutely beautiful cards. And even, like, the, the artwork on the inside. So let's see what messages we have today to help us with this crumbling... It, so, they, it, like, they're saying things like this could even just be about belief systems, right? It doesn't have to be about religious or spiritual belief systems, but there is some real belief systems at this point. It could be things where this crumbling is a fallacy or a false belief system, a false narrative that you're finally seeing the falsehood for going, what? And now this opens up such a world of possibility because everything's new. Everything's new. And then I heard... This this is in ruins, right? You're leaving the world of ruin behind. I don't see this as like a throw matches on the fire and fucking pour gasoline and watch the shit burn. Like, you're not trying to like destroy everything around you. See, see you later, you burn the fucking bridge too. This is all of the stuff that's been, I heard, aging and leading to decay. It, it's stoned. It's petrified here. It's turned to stone. And they're like, that's not for you. These dead flowers at the bottom, they're not for you. The vibrancy of life is for you. So they are really saying, I also heard one of the cards in here is like a trust the niggle. Let's check the bottom. Nope. Anna, grandmother of Jesus, seeding the light laying foundation's divine plan. There's power, universal energy. There's things, I think, just happening universally right now that 
cosmically that the energy that's coming in they're just reminding me that this energy is for you not to you I do see a lot of fall colors here and there is a stream right here with water I'm being strongly guided like it may be important to get to some water today sit by some listen to the sounds of the water as well so I'm going to ask for a um, an angel or pollen member here, a, wa a guardian that and watcher that may be here to help us move through this time. I heard of uncertainty of doubt because there may have been a long time of uncertainty or doubt where <clears throat> I heard you weren't quite sure of the path, you weren't sure where the hell any of this shit was leading to, and they're saying, you know, whether the path is clear or not, your heart's going to show you that way going to lead you to that water it's going to so that one we have Rahab angel of the deep I want to get one more because this has been a really long time they're not sure like things have jumped but I see it he's he's holding his breath but he's aware that to sit under here he also has to release things slowly is there any other messages from this deck he wants to talk. He doesn't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. The bottom is the Ascendant, Sariel. Sariel. Ascendant, that would be up. <laughs> we have what fell out was Angel of Script. Mm, love this. Which I'm going to read first because it is what came out. This is a new deck to me. So I'm going to read it because I don't know. Actually, I opened up to Sariel, which is be the same, the angel of the waning moon. So interesting. Um, Rahab was the keeper, the ascendant. So I will read the ascendant. I'm here. And then I will read that. They're not huge. But this message, oh, angel of mercy was under that. As the days wound on, the sky tugged at Sariel's glaze. Deep below his own identity, he felt another stirring. There was a part of him that remained among the stars, and it begged him to take his place with them again. He longingly watched the heavens and wished to be free from the tattered cage of his body had become. As weariness overtook his consciousness each night, he fell into a dream and rose again. The chorus called him home. The meaning is the fixation you feel towards your goals is powered by real purpose. Deep inside yourself, you know that your needs are and what they, and they cannot be denied. Regardless of whether success is possible, the process of striving towards your goal is what ultimately matters. Interesting. I do feel this is spiritually on a mat on your spiritual journey okay or whatever your goal is that you're going towards it's driven for you spiritually driven okay so prenemu is the angel of script and it says the masked angel Prinamu shared angelic glyphs with the humanity each expressive in their own way theirs was the language of the infinite without a written language the higher concepts were attainable but their physical form gave them a power that transcended the veil of death Prinamu's offer other gift to the world was to carve the names of the deceased on a stone that was laid above their graves he said this made men more like angels at night he walked among the graves carrying a light. He wouldn't say why. So this is about domain, burial rights, and legacy. When considering death, we cannot help but also consider our legacy. But the words written on your tombstone are not yours to write and not for you to read. Let this card be a sign that you should relinquish your desire to control how you will be remembered. Share your purpose in life now, not at some future date. Seek to appreciate the moment you are in now instead of wasting your efforts building a bulwark to defend the inevitable encroachment of time. Hearing two on this. One, um, I do feel like in terms of if you know that you have a, are terminal and you're going through um, 
heard cancer treatments or you just know that time's time's clicking. There is a book um, written by, I can't remember his name, but it's a deaf doula, the man that created the system. And I, I believe strongly in, if you know, there it's not about controlling your memory, but being able to honor legacy while you're alive and having those discussions with the family now, not, you know, not waiting until you are dead. But I think there is also a real importance in this card about some of us, especially if we have tried to control the narrative throughout our life or are controlling the narrative, may want to control what it looks like on how, you know, people remember them. But the thing is, you cannot control that. People take things in all sorts of different ways and no one person will remember you exactly the same. And if you try and control this, right, if we write our own obituaries and put things out, people will be like, well, that's not really true. And I'm thinking about some people who may, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm hearing like the narcissist or something like that, you know, like if they wrote their obituary and you were listening to it, you'd have to question about whether this was the same person that, you know, you, you had met. So that's just what I want to say there. And we have the angel of the deep Rahab and we'll find out here. Before the Watchers taught mankind the burial rite, Rahab ferried the bodies of the dead into the sea. His promise to humanity was to bring them to a place where they would never be disturbed. They prayed that the abyss would give the dead peace, but no one could know for sure except the Grim Watcher. The dark place was his home and his alone. The passage into darkness was a place of no return, even for him. So this is about isolation faith and respect the card may be a sign that there is something worth holding on to regardless of the pain it causes accepting pain and punishment can be a lonely experience but that is the true path of the faithful take comfort in knowing it is a well-trodden road even if you are you ultimately walk it alone and as your faith changes and as you grow in who you are there may be people you have to walk from because they can't walk the path with you anymore. They can't handle the elevation. Okay, they're getting sick. It's like in the mountains. They feel like they're running out of oxygen and they're not speaking the same language you are anymore. So if this crumbling again, they're saying that which needs to fall will take take the things, the lessons, and the memories that were meant to go with you. Angel of the mountain. <laughs> wow. It's quite the picture. says, the way Turiel carried his massive stature was a matter of public spectacle. His feats of strength were sometimes put to good use, but often bled into showmanship. The praise people showered him with seemed to sustain Turiel almost as much as food and water. Crowds gathered to seek the mighty Turiel's favor. They hailed him from afar at the common grounds and sought to catch a glimpse of him preparing his hunting party. Gifts of food and gold were brought to curry flavor. Weapons and jewelry were brought in his honor whenever they could be spared. The men that truly impressed him were made a part of his story, a grand tale in which each night was a feast, each drink was a toast, and each lover was a grand affair. So this is about power, greed, and legends. It is easy to be numb to the influence others have. We have over others, sorry. Power comes in many forms, and some powers arise without our knowledge. Don't be callous. Let your actions speak for themselves. Be mindful of those caught in your wake. Without proper care, you may achieve your goals at the expense of the only things in life that truly matter to you. And I heard right away, and I'm just... Heard right away, um... <clears throat> this could be like if we work, 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 work to support for our family, but we're not home. To see our family, we have sacrificed that which means the most to us right if we are a workaholic or 
I got the sun to come out from that, right? Um, and that, I think, is the point where true awakenings, though, is where things like this, if, if, if we're seeing that we're going down this path of sacrificing everything that we care about and we thought, uh, they're also saying, like, if, if we have people around us or energy around us, that is very spiteful or angry. Like I'm getting like somebody who like, you know, just I'm, I, I'm picturing like someone who's been close to us and say they're, they're pissed off. <laughs> you have the warrior vessels and defiance, which is funny because this is what I was just thinking about. So they're like pissed off because they can't get you to do things anymore. Right. Or they're pissed off that you've got sick and tired of how they treat you and you're gonna rise up and say fuck this shit and i'm not i don't want this in my life and like so this person's like super pissed off and what i'm seeing is shit like they wouldn't put the work in to fix the situation so while they are pissed off because you don't have a relationship with them or the relationship strain you put boundaries up you know insert here <clears throat> I see it like them and I see like this person actively stewing because again I got the three of tears in reverse tears three of tears trail of tears sorry seven I think this because somebody doesn't either doesn't see something straight they they're so distorted right but it's like them being so pissed off and so mad and harboring all this anger and hoping bad things happen to you but yet it's because you won't come back to them and be their friend anymore or be their lover or be their you know be act you know within the family or you know whatever this is and it's like okay so let's get this straight you're pissed off because we don't you know you don't have the relationship you want with somebody so you act like an asshole to them hoping they'll learn and be your friend again or be your lover again be you know your like whatever it is and then it that's the that's the energy i get this this person is just so pissed off three of vessels as well now this is about celebration but i feel like they're just so pissed off because they don't have these times with you anymore but they can't take accountability for why they don't have these times with you anymore. Or why you've put these boundaries up. And yet, hmm, the one is shields. It's to protect yourself. And, and yet, they show why you have to protect yourself, essentially, is what I'm getting. Okay? So, I'm going to ask for one more question here. From the um, question. One more message from the Work Your Light Oracle as a pat parting message going forward here i heard just like keep your faith and you know like know that sometimes on your spiritual journey you may have to walk on what you feel is alone but you do have here your council of light that things are being divinely orchestrated you have your connections to the divine helpers in the subtle realms right there that while it may feel like a lonely journey sometimes especially as you have to walk away from friends that no longer resonate or energy that no longer resonates and you're changing on a cellular level and it, you'll notice sometimes that you've outgrown the situations around you i have warrior woman have you answered your deepest calling imara where are you being called to journey align your life what is aligned or needs to change right now? What is this? What is causing this shatter? Khalid's double lift, double mission, channeling and uplifting human humanity. And leap, you go first. The universe will catch you. I feel like for this is like for some of you, the Khalid's are very that star system. It's very important because this is like your origin star planet. kind of speaks a bit earlier to me as well of you know thinking and reminiscing about my uncle's church how he he could he could raise that population 
he could get everyone on their seat singing and happy and dancing and moving. For some of you, definitely may not resonate, but you are definitely a spiritual leader and you have that power within you. And if you have thought about um, sharing your gift with the world, the Spirit's like, please do. Please do. Because you have that power to raise. Anyway, so the message I have, and I will talk to you later. Bye, guys.